privilege to present <laughs> to us a man that will introduce the MC, the mistress of ceremony for today. I give you the great pastor, Vincent Rag. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. What a pleasure it is to come today, amen, as we celebrate Women's Month. But I'm going to be honest with you. I think we should celebrate women every month, amen. Come on, give God a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. We Hallelujah. thank God for an opportunity to come on today, amen. We have been busy in the background, amen, moving out here to Georgia, trying to get things together. But the opportunity to present itself to, to introduce my lovely wife and I, I had to say I would have to jump on that opportunity or not eat for the next month. So I just decided to jump on the opportunity, amen. Uh, I, I just wanna say about my wife, she is a Proverbs 31 woman, a virtuous woman uh, who loves God. I, if, if The very first thing I heard about her when I learned to her was she, they called her Little Moses because she was so much uh, enthralled in, in, in with understanding who God was and doing God's yeah. work. And, and, and since we've been married and since we've been knowing each other, that has been her mission, living mission, living for God and doing the work of God. Amen. She's not just a, a child of God. She's an elder in the church. She's a, a mother. She's a, a wife. She's a daughter. She's a sister. She's everything that uh, you can imagine. And God has truly blessed her. Uh, and, and I'm going to be I'm going to go ahead and tell you uh, on this week, we went to a wedding last week and, and she got a little sick. She came down with the COVID. Amen. But she was like, I'm still going to be able to do the event. I'm still going to be able to to participate amen now she's better now and everything is back in the place yeah come on give god a hand praise uh, uh, and, and, and just this, the characteristic of her of who she is and what she is amen wanted to do and wanted to make sure that she is uh taking care of god's business so uh with no further ado i want to introduce to you my wife my queen my love none other than elder cheryl wright god bless you amen, amen. Truly, it is a blessing um, to be with all of you today. Um, there was a time this week that I didn't know that that would happen or not, um, but God is faithful. Yes. <laughs> and when I think about just the idea of women telling their story, um, the, the line that, that flows through all of our stories is the faithfulness of God because we yes. can probably all attest to the fact that if it had not been for him yes. <laughs> being on our side, living in and through us to help us to be um, what he has called and purpose for us to be, yes. then we wouldn't have a story to tell. And so I'm so grateful to be part of this event today. So blessed to be asked to participate yes. because um, I'm sure that there was so many other people that you could have chosen, yes. but I am very, very delighted to be with you today mm. and to help participate in this program so that we can honor the beautiful women that not only are changing American history, not only changing world history, but changing the history for our kingdom. We know. Hallelujah. God Hallelujah. has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, sometimes it seems if we look at what's happening in the natural, it, it seems that, you know, things are changing for the worse, right? But we know that our God has a plan for us and it is victorious, right? That, yes. that <laughs> as we continue to live out our lives and our stories, yes it always ends in victory, right? Mm -hmm. And so I am happy to be a victorious woman of faith participating yes, this afternoon. And so mm -hmm. I want us to just continue along with this program so that we can make sure that we honor the beautiful women of the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. Him. Hallelujah. Praise Him. <laughs> Um, so I think that as we begin, we're going to start with um, our brother, Bruce Clark. It's so good to see you. Good to see you, Cheryl. <laughs> um, today has been a long time, but I, I'm so thankful to um, see you and your lovely yeah. wife's face today. Um, so you're going to give us a reading this, yes. morning, this afternoon? Yes. Yes. And your husband referenced it already, the virtuous woman. <laughs> this is uh, just so beautiful and, you know... It's, it's also interesting that this, this is an acrostic that those who study the Bible closely know that each line begins with 
the first the letters of the alphabet mm -hmm. in Hebrew, and um, and and this makes this extra special. A lot of effort went into this, you know, thousands of years ago to write this. So we are fortunate yes. that we have this this scripture Beautiful. still with us, yes. right? Children of Israel, all of us are. So I will read um, Proverbs thirty one ten through twenty nine. Mm -hmm. And I think this, this describes so many women I know, including the beautiful woman yeah, sitting next yeah. to me right here. Yes, it's me. <laughs> she, is, she is too humble. Um, and I trust her. I trust her. A capable wife who can find, she is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm yes. all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the, shirt, the yes. ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. Mm -hmm. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant yes. girls. Amen. She considers a field and buys it. At the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. Yes. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts, puts her hand to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows. Yes. For all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchant with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Mm. Her children rise up and call her happy. Her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Amen. 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 Oh my Amen. God. Praise the Lord. And I think that the the um what I love so much about that passage of scripture um is that the a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And I think, you know, sometimes there's there's so many things that pull at our attention in the world, right? To look for those things that are praiseworthy, but it is in God that we find those things that will, will allow people to recognize mm -hmm. the goodness of our God, that when we place our trust, when we place our full confidence in him, mm -hmm. that's when we stand out as women of the true and living God. And I think it's so wonderful that, that I, I, I don't need any praise from man. I don't really need it. But no. what I will say is that when I find my place, when I yes. find my connection with mm -hmm. my living God, that it is yes. in that, that people recognize. And not only do they recognize and honor us as women, but they also yes. recognize and honor our God. Amen. Yes. Amen. So I'm so thankful and grateful for that. What a beautiful passage of scripture. Um, I, I want to just go ahead and flow into prayer at this time. Let us just prepare our hearts um, mm -hmm. to connect with our God. Father yes. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you this day. Yes. This is the day that you have yes. made and we shall rejoice and be yes. glad in it. Yes. God, I thank you for this you. opportunity that you have given us to come together. Lord God, yes. your word declares that where two or more are gathered in your yes. name, there you are in the midst. We thank you for your presence among us yes. right now. Yes. 
Yes. We thank you, Lord Jesus, yes. for an opportunity to honor and recognize women. We yes. thank yes. you for the women that go forth and tell the stories of other yes. women that are doing great and profound things in this world. But also, Lord God, we thank you yes. for the women that are taking up charge and taking up space, oh God, and using their voices, using their talents, using yes. their treasures to impact the kingdom of God so that people yes. might know that you still say that you still deliver that you still set free God we yes. thank you yes, for the transformation you. that you have made in each and every one of our lives and we're thanking you oh God that because of your spirit that lives on the inside of us that mm. we will continue to move forward mm. and to do the things that you have called and purpose for us to do yes. Lord God I'm thankful and Thank we're so honored to be able to take yes. up time today to honor women. And so I'm asking you, Lord God, yes. that you would bless every woman that engages in this platform today, yes. that you would Amen. touch, Lord God, every participant. Lord God, that we might feel your very presence for where yes. the spirit Amen. of the Lord is, there is yes. liberty. We thank you for the freedom that you are Amen. providing us even yes. now through this yes. platform. And so we're yes. asking yes. you now, Lord God, to have your way. That yes. Lord God, it doesn't have to be perfect, oh God, because mm. you serve a perfect yes. God, Lord, that when we abide with you, Lord Jesus, that we don't have to worry about all of the details, Lord God, because yes. you have it all under control. We ask that you would have your way. We ask that you be glorified mm -hmm. in our midst, Lord God. And we're asking that yes. you would bless every woman today, that yes. they will continue, Lord God, to do yes. and be, Lord God, yes. who you purposed for them to be. Lord God, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. Have your way. In the mighty and master's name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise um, the Lord. And so now at this time, we're going to have a reading from the Mother of Peace, Mrs. Teresa Roger from the Heavenly Couples, Heavenly Oasis IFC. Is she with us already? Yes. Okay. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I just thought it was appropriate today to pick um, a speech from the mother of peace, Hak Chun Moon, because, yeah, we're celebrating women here. Um, I picked the speech, Women's Role in World Peace. Um, it's a speech she gave in 92. And I just picked parts from the speech that I thought just moved me. Um, so in the beginning part of the speech, she says, in our audience, I see the greatness of God's handiwork in America. Women of every racial, religious, and cultural background. But there's one thing that binds most of us here. We are women united to build a better and safer world for our children and families. Yes. And then she continues and she talks about God's love. And the title of this part of the speech is Living for the Sake of Others. Mm -hmm. Moreover, if God created the universe for the sake of love, yes. it is important to understand the nature of God's love. In our world today, we must use the word love in many ways. Mm -hmm. I've heard some say that they love chocolate or that they love to dance. <laughs> the often heard expression, I love you, no longer refers to everlasting love. Often has I love you turned into I want a divorce in our society today. Mm -hmm. This kind of limited or self-centered love is not God's love. No. God's love is true, selfless, and unchanging. True love is the act of giving without the condition of receiving. When God created us, he invested 100% of everything he had again and again. The reason why God wanted to invest himself completely is because he wanted his object of love to be better than himself. The act of living for others means that you have to give 100% of yourself until there's nothing left. Only then will the love of your object rush back to fill the void. An example of this is the Earth's atmosphere. When a low pressure system forms, air moves in from a high pressure system. The air starts circulating and can even result in a hurricane. In other words, it is the complete rendering and sacrificing of yourself for the sake of others that produces a vacuum, which will be very source of tremendous power when God replenishes you with his true love. And then she continues and she talks about the three attributes of true love. Um, true love contains the great attributes of inheritance, participation, 
and equality. Thus, if you truly love God as he loves you, then you can possess what God possesses. You can participate in everything that God does. Yes. yes. And you can share in God's infinite value. Amen. And then she talks about um, sacrificing. Um, okay. She says, if we claim that our lives are to be lived only for the sake of others and for one, no one else, then we would never experience love. True love starts only when we sacrifice ourselves for the purpose of loving others. This is captured by the classic Charles Dickens tale in which Mr. Scrooge, who despite all his riches, never was able to experience joy until he learned to live for others. When Mr. Scrooge sacrificed himself for the sake of his community, he became the inheritor of love among his neighbors. Likewise, when a person sacrifices herself for the sake of her family, she becomes the initiator of love in her family. Mm -hmm. So when we sacrifice ourselves for the sake of others, it may seem as if we lose everything, but actually it's the opposite. Not only do we become subject and mass of love, but we also transcend to a higher realm of love. And then I just picked apart from her, um, from the ending words from her speech. Starting now in this year of women, we must be the model movement of true love for the world. We must begin with ourselves and unify our minds. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> this thing is so inspiring. Anyway. Uh, okay, so we must begin with ourselves and unify our minds and bodies and become vertically connected with God's true love. We must live for the sake of us to bring love and understanding. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Sister Teresa, that was so beautiful and so inspiring. Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, love cannot be possible without sacrifice, right? And it is so important for us to, what you said at the end, you know, have that connection with God really experience and accept his love for us because when we do that it will be impossible for us not to be compelled to reach out and extend that love to others you cannot receive god's love and not love others yes. and so i just think it's so important for us to keep that on the forefront of our minds that we continue to be selfless that we continue to sacrifice that we to understand that true love is about really helping others and that's how we heal the world right that's how yes. we heal the land <laughs> it is through that level of sacrifice and love yes. one for another the word says that this will all men know that we are his disciples if we have love one for another right yes amen. so that is that is the key amen thank amen. you so much that was that was so beautiful that was. Um, at this time i'm going to turn it over um, to the Adrians for them to give us an introduction. Is that right? Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know what to introduce, but we're gonna bring you greetings and the purpose of this wonderful occasion, which already, I mean, gets to be shared. This is Bio. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. I also thank you for the heavily coupling ministry, um, collaborate um, to celebrate women's um, history, man's, our work and our life. Truly thank you. And um, truly thank you for my husband, uh, Father mm -hmm. Bayo Adolin. Yes. Um, he has a, a very faithful obedience to God and to try his best to live in God's truth <laughs> and love. Um, because of him, I am so be encouraged and also empowered to do this law as a um, woman of, a daughter of God. I truly thank you. And today uh, we are going to celebrate um, our true woman food our work, our life, our story. Mm -hmm. As we continue not only God's giving, the original value we all have within. Truly thank you for this mm -hmm. opportunity we come together to
to continuously nurturing and nourishes and applaud our work and encourage and fellowship yes. and hoping we together and blessing mm -hmm. the heavenly yes. world <laughs> of peace together. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm truly thankful for all participation. We have uh, uh, many, many um, um, organizations who are doing great work in society. And I also um, taking the law uh, to Women's Federation World Peace and Virginia representative. Mm -hmm. Today, we are uh, invited to um, former president of Women's Federation World mm -hmm. Peace, Dr. Angelica Seri, who mm -hmm. worked for 13 years and bringing special greeting. And she is um, currently work Women's Federation for World yes. National Advisor mm -hmm. to assist the current new president. She is also uh, inter independent interdependently mm -hmm. uh, work as speaker, educator, and she is the exemplary work and life and living with the leadership of the heart, living by mm -hmm. logic of law. As she display, mm -hmm. she uh, also awarded Crown of Peace Award for exemplary leadership in reconciliation and peacemaking. Yes. Mm -hmm. She is the parent of four children and four grandchildren. I like to call upon Dr. Angelica Seri. Amen. Amen. <laughs> On you, Sister Seri. Good morning. This is Bayo, Father Bayo, beloved women and men of peace. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me today. today. I feel everything was said already, to be honest with you. Uh, Elder Cheryl, you just nailed it already. You you spoke <laughs> what we need to hear, and also uh, the words by Mother Moon. But I'd like to confirm from my side. You know, it's wonderful that I love the title. By the way, his story must tell her story. Time usually there's only one month a year where we hear about her story, where everyone talks yeah. about it, and right. And someone mentioned we should celebrate every day. So it is very apropos that we. Uh, remember that many women, I would say, all contributed to history. We are celebrating achievements, you know, like Mrs. Scott, Scott uh, Loretta King and uh, many women who have supported their husbands in history and also who have made inventions in every sector of society, right? But they're not known. You don't know that. So this is the beginning of a revolution, I feel. And uh, we are now coming into a new era, as I was read by Mother Moon's words, the era has arrived in 1992, it was announced, the arrival of the era of women. And we are talking about the women that are here, you know, not just any woman, we're talking about women of faith, women of uh, uh, righteousness, women of spirituality who are called to make a difference. So when we're talking about her story, I cannot help but think of the programs we've had in the Women's Federation to honor women not for their external accomplishments, and that is great, but for their internal victories that they had to accomplish in order to get there. Because we know it's difficult from in a society where still we have male dominance, most of all in other countries here in America, we are really lucky and grateful that we women of all races, and I wanna give all of our women of all races a round of applause. Could we please do that, okay? Because our grandmothers, our mothers, you know, are standing here because half of humanity is really women, right? Mothers who carry the burden of the heart in the family. Yes. We we are in the her story. We we listen to the stories of incredible suffering, incredible obstacles that women had to overcome and came yes. out victoriously. And as was said earlier, it was because of what thing? One thing: prayer, faith in a living relationship with the creator. There is no way without God to create peace and be a peacemaker. So I know from my own experience, you know, 
when you want to be a peace leader, you have to be tested in yourself. You mm -hmm. cannot just respond to animosity or what it's comes your way, way, right? You have to yes. struggle within. It's like Jacob battle inside. <laughs> and then you cannot just do whatever you feel. You have to listen yes, to right. the voice of God, higher purpose, right? That's what we call living for the sake of others, living by the logic of love. That's the logic that doesn't make sense for some people, but it, it makes sense for God because that is loving the unlovable, loving the, yes. the downtrodden and so forth. And that is what is needed right now in the world to, to bring a change. The change doesn't come from the outside, as our sister said, it's from the inside. And so we are, I really want to honor and celebrate the internal victories that all the women here and everywhere have accomplished. So this is a great day of celebration. And there's one more thing. Amen. <laughs> you know, we cannot do it without one more uh, area or one more group of women, and that is the next generation. I really believe we, we women in our age, we cannot bring peace without including the next generation. So I was asked to briefly introduce uh, our new president. Mother Moon is also concerned about the securing the future. Uh, Mrs. Kayleigh Muffet, who was appointed uh, early this year, and we had already a best passing ceremony. I hope you will all see the video to harmoniously uh, now transfer all the foundations we have made to the next generation so they can carry the baton and bring even greater success and inherit that heart that we have experienced with our God and with each other. So yeah, Mrs. Kelly Muffet, she, I know her very well, by the way, she's from my community over here in Maryland. I've seen her as a youth pastor when I was a pastor in New Hope Family Church and she has her life and recently also worked with the Universal Peace Federation. She's really a already for her with three children, which I think qualifies her for real to be in this position, right? You have to be a mother to lead other mothers. And uh, she has many new ideas to the table that bring us to the next level. And I look forward to more young women to join this great cause that Mother Moon is putting out, the clarion call to women, for women to come together and create a culture, a culture of peace. Mm -hmm. Much. Happy Women's Tree Month. Woo! Beautiful. Beautiful. beautiful, beautiful. Amen. Here she is. That's Mrs. Kelly Muffet. We hear from <laughs> the family, the next generation, who she just talked about, our sister. Greetings to everybody. Thank you so much to Father Bio and Ayana san for inviting me to greet this wonderful program that you have prepared today. Thank you also to Dr. Selly for always your warm introduction. I'm so grateful for having this time to work closely with Angelica to inherit and represent both generations really strongly. I think this gives our Heavenly Parent much joy and much hope when we can as the next generation take time to inherit from our elders and as the elders make space to bring up the next generation. It's been such a pleasure to work closely together. We are coming towards the end of uh, International Women's History Month this month. And what an exciting time to be talking about the story of women throughout human history. And also I think looking towards the future what the story of women will be in the future. I feel so grateful and fortunate to be living at this time because first of all, I'm grateful for all the women who came before me who really fought to make space for the role of women and the value of women in society. And as we know, history has been fraught with such difficult situations for all women. These days, particularly, I'm, I'm so grateful to be living in this time and active in this realm at this time because of the leadership of our founder, Dr. Hak Jahan Moon, who we also affectionately call our Mother Moon. For me, as a, a young woman leader, I really look to Mother Moon as an example of the kind of woman I want to be. What I appreciate most about her is that no matter the situations that she's overcome in her life, you know, leaving a war-torn country from North Korea to South Korea, 
and working side by side with her husband for decades to really persevere to create a new way forward that is centered on peace. You know, Mother Moon's motivation behind all that she does is she really sees herself as the daughter of God, whom she calls her heavenly parent. And this is the kind of heart that motivates her to push through even difficult situations when people misunderstand her, judge her, persecute her, accuse her. She offers nothing but forgiveness, love, and grace to them because she knows she's here as a representative of Heavenly Parent. What I'm so grateful for in Mother Moon's leadership also is that she has really pushed forward this concept of who Heavenly Parent is. We all recognize who our creator is, right? You know, all the women gathered here, these are the spiritual women that are gathered here. And although we may call this creator by different names, we may interact and worship with this creator by different names, we all recognize the value of this creator. Now, I really love Mother Moon's explanation of our creator calling God our heavenly parent, because what it does is represent the, the roundness of the identity of a parent. It's not just a father, it's not just a mother, but it's the parent. And what that's done for me as a woman is open my eyes to this understanding that if God is a parent, if God has both masculine and feminine nature within himself, then it also means that I'm a true reflection of God. Of course, this is something we know and we talk about, but because of this identity of heavenly parent, it gives me permission to recognize that my course as a daughter, my course as a sister, my course as a wife, and my course as a mother is also God's course because God is a heavenly parent. God also has, along with the heart of a heavenly father, has the heart of a heavenly mother. And because of that, it means there is so much more deep spirituality ingrained in every aspect of my life because now... I am truly, as a woman, a reflection of God, just like my, my male counterparts are. You know, Mother Moon to me, as she gets towards this older age in her life, I see her looking back and reflecting and appreciating the many people who have contributed to the work that she's been doing, the peace building work. I also see how she makes space for every culture, every race, every religion. Because to me, this is the leadership of a mother. This is the leadership of a true woman. A true woman makes space for all to be welcomed at the table. You know, I'm a mom of three children as well, and sometimes I get frustrated with my kids, but no matter what, they're my children, and they're always gonna be welcome at my dinner table. They're always gonna be welcome in my home because I have this motherly heart towards them. Now, it's not always easy to extend that, right, to people outside of my family, but I see Mother Moon is really an example of that. She has this heart of a mother for the entire world, and so she doesn't just take responsibility for her family. She takes responsibility for the world. So she brings together religious leaders of different faiths to offer the, the unique perspectives of their understanding of our creator together. We honor that and we bring that together. We respect one, an, one another's differences. She brings together different races. She visits all the continents. She spends time with every person, every race, every culture, because she sees all of them as God's children. She also embraces you know, all different world leaders, different government types, because she, she seeks in her leadership to make sure there's no separation because of your affiliation, because of your race. And to me, this is the prime example of the leadership of a true woman, particularly as a true mother. And this is why she is affectionately known as the mother of peace, because she emulates and she really represents I think the kind of leadership all mothers want to have. We fall short sometimes, right? I fall short sometimes. But in Mother Moon, I can really see an example of that. And so as we're discussing today the, the, the value of spiritual women and our impact on the world around us, I think it's so important that we always come back to our identity as daughters of our heavenly parent, daughters of our creator. 
you know, when I'm going through different challenges in my life and I can feel I'm being more short tempered, I'm being uh, less patient or I'm getting into, you know, arguments with people or feeling judgmental, this is a red flag for me to stop and check in with myself. And I ask myself, you know, do I know who I am? When I ask myself this question, it makes me check in with my own relationship with my heavenly parent. And I have to answer that question. Do I remember that I am the daughter of heavenly parent? If I know this about myself, that I know I can give heavenly parents love to people, God's love to people, not my limited love. I, uh, my three children, two of them are daughters. And before they go to sleep most nights, I, I ask them the question, do you know who you are? And by now they know and they kind of roll their eyes when I ask them that question. But I have taught them from a young age that they are the princesses of God because I want them to see themselves that way. These are future women leaders. These are future wives and mothers. And I want them to always know who they are deep down outside of their job, outside of the different titles they may have and the work that they do. No matter what happens, they are always a daughter of God. And so I think this is the message for all women leaders. The more that we carry this truly in our hearts with strength, it empowers us to be able to trust our intuition in the decisions we're making and how we do peace building, how we support our family, our husbands and our children, how we support the public work we may be doing in our lives. If we have this at the central core identity of all we're doing, then I know we will represent this feminine side of our, our heavenly parent most boldly. And certainly this will be the story that is told. So to all those who are joining us today, I really believe we are living in a special time in history where finally, after so much effort of so many women, that this is the time in history where the true story of womanhood can be expressed and told. And of course, we women know we can't just talk about it. We have to do the work. We have to model this, what it means to be a true woman. So it means we got to do the hard work of growing in our relationships, loving with true love, and representing this kind of attitude towards all difficult situations. But what we also offer the world is a healing touch. It's the mothers who heal the ouchies and the boo-boos of the babies, right? But it's also the mothers who can heal the most deeply impacting wounds that exist within our global family. So together, all my sisters, I truly believe that we can bring this kind of healing to the world through the healing touch of womanhood and motherhood. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share with all of you today. And I wish you the greatest blessing as women leaders. And I look forward to working with all of you. God bless you. Wow. God bless you. Namaste. Show your love, brothers and sisters. Wow. From such an affirmation of what our Lord, Yahushua, Jesus the Christ told us. And the little one shall lead us. <laughs> She's not little in size, not little in heart. But when we talk about age, which is just another number, we want to thank God sincerely for all that has been shared and said already to quicken us to understand the beauty of our identity, our identity, our shared identity as children of God. Amen. Amen. We are children of God, sons and daughters of God, sons who are living up the true divine feminine present we have here. Thank you, Kelly Moffat. Thank you, Dr. Angelica Selly. But thanks to our facilitator who has been facilitating us, Shirelle. Right. Yes. Right. Yes, they get it right. So no, thank God. No, you can't go wrong. <laughs> no, right. And we are so blessed. Thank you, Dr. Um, Bruce Clark, the wonderful wife. Yes. Women's reading. I'm not going to belabor because this is the time we want to feature um, our two um, honorees today, her story honorees. But before we do that, um, I want to make a quick correction, not correction, but um, something I needed to have done before my wife um, spoke. Um, did she speak very well? Oh, this is my husband uh, in love with, with what God is allowing me to do. Um, <laughs> 
you know, before before I introduce this this wonderful two sisters um, who are going to come and share their story, I want to first correct, as I said, I could not introduce my wife properly, and I want to do that. I want to do that because this is this is um, her story in the making, just like all of you here, your stories are still in the making as enterprising, um, enterprising women of faith, daughters of our heavenly parent, daughters of God, the creator, giving birth, birthing a heavenly world together, not by yourselves, but with the family of God, men and women, all of us. You know, there are so many hidden gems, jewels of God's divine feminine love, that unfortunately, as has been said earlier, remain hidden due to humanity's inability to fan the flames of true love that shines through many women as wives, mothers, sisters, daughters, and especially as true daughters of God. You know, the patriarchal justice system has not helped in providing environments for shields to shine the God-given Christ-like parental hearted unique love light women have been granted to complete our humanity to complete our story to complete the divinely hearted identity we all share as children of God our creator hence we have been divinely called I and my wife and others who have joined us you too you are on that call that's why you're here we have been called and charged to facilitate pioneer and promote history i want to make some clarification so that we are all always on the same page which we are all on the same page i may be a little bit ahead in a way but we are still on this same journey together you know history is really what is called man's story h-i-s that's why it's called history because it has been mainly written by men men and so this is what the holy spirit said you know it is now time for history to really allow must not just allow history must tell her story her story is the story that will complete our story so the stories of unsung heroes in this our global village in every neighborhood of the world one certain song hero again as i said it's my wife my darling a true a true enterprising woman of faith a true daughter of god in the making we are helping do our best to represent that which was in the beginning the original image and likeness of god so i want to thank you mrs bio for really allowing me and all of us to be part of this program this women's history month um for allowing us as men to really um repent um for putting such words like um a woman's place is in the kitchen or a woman should not speak in church um foolishness like that thinking to put the woman down but actually the person it's i want you women to use that lemon and make lemonade because you are the backbone that's why the man knows that already he says behind every so-called great man without you being the spine there are no men there are no strong men so yes they may have said to believe to you but i want you to know just like someone said a woman's place is in the kitchen it came from a man but you know i thank god for my mother <laughs> That's she's one of the inspirations behind this story. She used a kitchen to develop an industry that feeds people, a restaurant, a food kitchen that, that the whole neighborhood comes to. So this is the power of understanding your true identity. Once you know you are a child of God, a daughter of God, <laughs> everything solves. You walk in that way. So today, 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 my brother, I'm saying all that to let you know that there are so many great women so many great women oh my god if we are to <laughs> put out the list uh we know that's why we, we are going to be doing this not only um once a year uh at this time of the year but we are going to be doing this as often as we can uh as we make great relationships 
in our community, we want to encourage everyone, make great relationship with great women. Without them, our communities will never give birth to a heavenly world. So to comment, um, I would like to share the story, but I think at this point, the Spirit is saying, we, the sisters have to just share their story. You have eight minutes, please forgive the time. I know eight minutes cannot, cannot, cannot tell everything about you. That's why I'm encouraging you. I will help write your memoirs, as Mother Moon has written her memoirs, so that the world can see how, how she, up there, doing the great work, you two down here, in your neighborhoods, in your nations, doing great work also. So the first person we're going to have as our her story honor it today is a great woman. I'm not going to read her bio. I have a, 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 actually a 25-page bio, which I, I can't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> but I've come to know this woman through a great work we've been doing called the Christ Ambassadors for Peace. Um, she participated in, in a 12-week class, and this is the ninth week of that class. But beyond that, this woman is a great woman who has founded a great work called HELP, H-E-L-P. Wow. Don't we all need help? And you know what that means? It means H for helping, E, every, L, living, P, person. Without further ado, I give you... Dr. Wilhelmina Ford, the one who is helping every living person to share a little excerpt of her story, a triumphant story. Let us welcome Dr. Wilhelmina Ford. Dr. Ford, where are you? I'm right here, Father Bayo. Before I start, I want to say thank you. I'm so grateful to have met you, been under your stewardship for the last eight weeks. You have poured so much into my life, and I must say thank you. It's a blessing to meet your beautiful wife, who has such a soft and gentle and kind spirit, beautiful words that she shared with us this morning. And I wanted to say hello to my sister, Emily DiCarlo. She has been with us for the last eight weeks. We have embraced each other, supported each other, showed love to each other. It has been a joy for the last eight weeks. So um, hello to everybody, not bypassing any of you. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever morning. you are. Morning. Good morning. Now, um, I was pondering prior to today, what am I gonna say? It's easy to talk about others, but it's not as easy to talk about yourself. So I allowed the Holy Spirit to lead me and give me words that will guide me on what to say today. And what came to my spirit was, order my steps. Amen. I says, order my steps in your world, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Yes. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. Yes. Please order my steps in your world. Now, I'm going to share some biblical principles with you that was heavily instilled in me as the little girl. First of all, I was raised by a grandmother. I did not have a mother and father in my home. I was raised in the government projects. Some people would say, how did you come through all of that? But because I had a praying grandmother who instilled in us the importance of having a relationship with the Lord and every night without cease, she would line us up around the bed. There was five of us. Well, actually my mom had seven kids, but my grandmother took responsibility to raise us as girls. And she would put us around the bed and she would pray without cease. She made sure we understand the importance of having a relationship. And here are some of the biblical principles that she poured into me and my siblings. She said, and this is what came through me when I first met Father Bayo. Yahoshawa is his name. Yes. But we grew up referring to him as Jesus. And he is the anointed one. And he says, and my grandmother always said, 
that I must love the Lord thy God with all my heart, mind, body, and soul. And like unto it, I must love you as my neighbor, as though I love myself. And on the, these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. And that's out of the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 30 through 31. Another principle that my grandmother instilled in me, she says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And that's a biblical concept yeah. spoken by Joshua, Jesus, in the book of Luke, chapter 6, 31, and Matthew, chapter 7, verse 12. It is commonly referred to as the golden rule. So I had some great teaching by a great lady. So in everything, do unto others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. And that's in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 12. Now, as the scripture teaches, train up a child in the way he slash she should go. And when she or he is old, mm -hmm. they will not depart from it. Amen. So amen. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 6. Now, when we look around today and we see how uh, disruptive things are appearing, I'm believing it's because we have not carried out certain principles. Now, I love referring to the word spanking. <laughs> spanking does not really mean hitting. It can be spiritual. It can be yes. psychologically. Yeah. It doesn't mean you can just chastise a kid. Mm -hmm. You don't have to hit them just to correct them. But in my days coming up, my grandmother chose to hit me. And I'm so grateful because she didn't hit me to hurt me. No. She hit me to help me. She wanted to make sure I understand the good and the bad, the right and the wrong. And to her, I am forever grateful. Hallelujah. Now, there are 20 biblical verses in the word of God regarding spanking. We have had, here's one. We have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the father of spirits and live? And that's in the book of Hebrews, chapter nine, I mean, chapter 12, verse nine. Whoever spares the rod hates his son or her son, mm. but he who loves him is, is diligent in disciplining him. That's in the book of Proverbs 13, 24. Now, why am I going through this? Because of the way I was reared, had a lot of impact on who I am today and how I share the love by correcting some of the young ladies when I see them, you know, slacking, not to uh, judge them, but just to help them, to help them understand these basic principles. God's love and his word is so prevalent, meaning dominant, and relevant, meaning applicable, in all that I am today. Now, I wanted to express those principles before I go into her story. I'm going to tell you about the little girl that I'm going to be referencing as myself, but it is her story. I'm going to tell you about the little girl who defied all odds. Man. I like to title it that way. Simply because of my environment that I was raised in. And when you consider my environment the way I was raised, it's kind of hard to understand how God used my environment to mold me for today. Yes, ma'am. So the little girl who defied all odds, as I mentioned, 
she grew up what we would call or classify as in a hardship. It's not easy growing up as a little girl without a mother. Bless you, bless you, bless you, Doctor. Amen, amen. Bless, bless you. Bless you. Help our Holy Spirit. Help her. Help our Holy yes. Spirit. Or Father. Bless you. Yes. Thank yes. you. In the home. Yes. By a grandmother who gave it her all. Yes. Bless yes. Yes. <laughs> My tears are of gratitude. Yes. Not of pain, Amen. not of sadness, yes, but because I'm so grateful. Amen. 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 We grew up, we didn't have grocery stores that we can go to and, and shop like I do today. We had welfare, government assistance. Mm. And the way my grandmother prepared that food, we couldn't tell. <laughs> we were never hungry. We were Miracle never hungry. workers. <laughs> we were never homeless and we were never helpless. We grew up through the inner city. We went to all the inner city schools. And in the middle school, we were bused, we were integrated into other areas with people who were not ready or prepared to receive us because we were considered as the less fortunate. Mm. But I tell you how that prepared me for today. We never had that exposure prior to middle school, but because of that exposure, it gave me a relationship and understanding on how other people perceived us, mm. which is now a positive. Back then, I looked at it as a negative. But today I understand it was a positive because it certainly prepared me for different diversities. From the middle school, we went to the high school. My grandmother made sure we understood the importance of education. She made sure we had a bag lunch. And I love the way Shirley Caesar sings that song about how mom prepared that bag lunch, the greasy bag lunch. We had those bag lunches and they were so good and fulfilling. Because of her nurturing, we understood the importance of appreciation. Yes. You may not have everything you want, yes. but appreciate what you have. Yes. And from high school, the little girl went to college. She studied criminal justice. She didn't go into the field, but she did go into other areas that had absolutely nothing to do with um, criminal justice. But on the inside, I always felt like a person of justice. Yes, and I was, it was always easy for me to see when someone has been violated, because my grandma taught us to re the respect of others. And when you see someone not being respected, you automatically seeing that that person is being violated. So I went into other areas besides criminal justice. Some of the jobs, because my grandmama taught us about education. She taught us about hard work. She taught us about honest work. Don't steal, don't rob, don't Amen, steal. amen. You know, be a good student for yeah, the yeah. Lord. Be a good yeah. servant for the Lord. And I say that to say this, as far as having hard jobs, I feud airplanes. Can you imagine? Yes. A little girl learning how to feud an airplane. Wow. How to yeah. use a dish to check the oil on an airplane. Dr. Ford, Dr. Ford, Dr. Ford, if I may interject, I, I, I hate to do this. I really do. <laughs> Dr. Ford is going to have a special interview with History Must Tell Her Story. Yes. We want to schedule, yeah. as you said, this is not just a 10-minute story for all of you. We want the world to really hear how God has worked in your life. So, Dr. Ford, we want you for 
just wrap up for the next minute i sure will we will we will this is not just, this is this your story is so inspiring like every other story we want to have a special yes. interview for just you and every other honoree today please continue one minute more thank, thank you. you and i will respect everyone's time thank you i'll advance forward when you looked at the name the word help underneath my name I've always helped everybody. And in 2010, God allowed me to establish a 501c3 and name it help. And I questioned God, help who? Mm -hmm. Helping every living person. I would go out into the streets and I would feed people for the last, since December of 2010, up until two years ago, three years, cause now it's 2023. I would go into the street I would feed people a midday meal, give them clean clothes, personal hygiene items, and flat shoes like sneakers or flip flops. And I would have word with them and I would pray with them. I, and from that organization, I was able to help students gain community service hours that they can use in college wow. to further their Very life. Amen. In addition to that, I would give them a celebratory event, honoring them for their volunteering. So just to tell you, going outside now, because I got to speed up, I am married. I have two children. I have three grandchildren. And um, I'm just grateful. But before I finish, I must do this. I must do this. I have four pillars in my life. And thank you again, Father Bayo, for helping me to understand about the pillars and the beams in my life. The first pillar is my husband. Where God paired us as one 33 years ago. And our love is still strong as well as long. My second pillar is Dr. Steve Branch that led me to my third and fourth pillar. My third pillar is Bishop Dr. Samuel E. Fisher mm -hmm. at the Higher Learning Bible Institute, the International Cemetery registered by the State Council of Higher Education in Virginia, where I received my honorary doctorate degree in humanity. And my fourth pillar is Father Adrian Bayo with the Heavenly Couples in Ministry. Yeah. Father Bayo Father has encouraged me to continue building true peaceful communities across all illusionary divides with men and women lifting each other up. I say thanks to all my pillars for helping me to become one of the many Christ Ambassadors for Peace Global Outreach Association and Academy as a being. <laughs> that is a privilege to be chosen as a servant and that's her story hallelujah <laughs> somebody give God the praise oh my god Amen. Oh. oh my goodness I know we can all um, just um, sit back all day and hear your story I mean 33 years of marriage doesn't begin to tell everything. Thank you again, Dr. Ford, for sharing that excerpt of your story. Again, we're looking forward um, on the 29th of this month, which is on Wednesday, there would be an Ambassador for Peace presentation um, by the Universal Peace Federation, and we'll be sending that information where you can then hear more of her, of her bio, of her story, as well as we will be interviewing her at another time specifically to tell the full length of her story. The next woman, the next daughter of God, the next enterprising, yes, enterprising woman of faith. Before we jump, let's give love again to Dr. Ford. Come on, somebody. Congratulations, Dr. Ford. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Now to follow in the same speed and, and heart of victory, in loving people beyond beyond um, 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 the pain that people even inflict on us. This is a great woman 
poor so i can go on and on for her wonderful bio which is also about 25 pages but <laughs> i'm going to do that uh, we're going to have my great sister she's going to come now also for about eight minutes please as we will be also um hearing our interview i already had an interview with her we'll be hearing our interview also by god's grace next week I give to you, brothers and sisters, another enterprising woman of uh, woman of faith, a true daughter of God in the making, who is here to continue to help birth a heavenly world together. Dr. Emily Grandi Carlo, <laughs> what is your Victoria story? Tell the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Father Bio. I am just so delighted to be with each of you. Um, it's an exciting time for me. Um, anytime it's exciting for me. I love you, Mother Bio, a beautiful daughter of God. My picture seems to have disappeared, but I'm going to get it back there. <laughs> fine. Continue, uh, uh, I am just so uh, excited. I'm just going to be very brief since I guess now I only have about eight minutes, right? <laughs> but it's, it's all good because I'm going to tell my story with three poems and three words. The first word, first of the three words, repentance. Because there's a favorite, I call it a prayer, in the book of Psalms, Psalms 51.10. And it says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And I submit that prayer as often as I can to God, because my life is built on that. Mm -hmm. I was saved at 12 years old. At my grandma, well, actually seven is when I gave my life to God and went up, gave my hand to the pastor and my heart to God, I was seven. I got baptized. And then at 12, I asked God for the Holy Ghost in my grandmother's kitchen because I was raised by her. And my father, you know, I heard Dr. Wilhelmina talk about, you know, she wasn't sad about her story because people will say about my story that I came from a broken home, but I came from a blessed home. Amen. <laughs> you know, my father, yes, he took us and we went to live with my dear grandmother and grandfather. I mean, it was just such a good spirit there. But I realized. Hey, I'm Ernie, I got hello. You have to. Hey, Ernie, you're going down. You have to repent um, in your lifetime, even though 